Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name is Matt, and today we're going to review Moon Knight number one. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff, it really helps me out and lets me know if you guys uh, like this content or not. So uh, with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right. So Moon Knight number one, it is by McKay uh, Cap Cappuccio and Rosenberg. Um, and I personally have never read Moon Knight, but this issue was pretty freaking cool. It looked good. Cool number one. Everybody was talking highly of it. So I figured I'd check it out. It starts off with this guy named Mr. Knight, who is i guess the daytime personality of moon knight um and for all you who don't know moon knight is like the worshiper of a god named khonshu and uh he's talking to a therapist because uh apparently uh he's got multiple personalities like i said this is his daytime personality and then at night he's moon knight um so he's he's worked through this stuff like basically the the therapist is us for you know this this introduction issue uh, where he's telling her everything kind of that's happened so far that's going on. So what we find out is basically uh, he has like a neighborhood in New York, kind of like Daredevil or Luke Cage or one of those characters. He is like a, you know, hero of the streets. And so in this specific neighborhood, he has drawn the symbol of the moon, uh, like spray painted on the walls and stuff. So these uh, these are vampires, actually, that have been stealing people. Um, and they're like... They've created, they have like a multi-level marketing cult or something that they've started. And they're telling these new recruits who are uh, recently turned into vampires, but they did not want to be. Uh, they're telling them, hey, like, you know, all you got to do is turn some people uh, tonight and then you'll, they'll be your sub ords. And once you reach the Omicron level, you'll be like making headway in the, in the organization. And so Moon Knight just flies straight into this van and takes these two head vamps out. He's a violent hero. So he'll like kill and stuff. He's kind of like Punisher. Maybe a little less uh, straightforward as the Punisher because he still, uh, you know, has just his hands and fists that he, he kills people with. He actually spares the lives of the vampires that didn't, you know, they, it wasn't their fault they became vampires. So he lets them get out of here, but he tells them, like, you know, stay away from my neighborhood kind of thing. Uh, or don't kill people in the neighborhood, at least. And so we kind of get, like, a breakdown of his history. We find out that he was a mercenary in his past life. And he, uh, like, well, at first he was, a, like, a war veteran. Then he became a mercenary and did a lot of bad stuff like war for hire things. And then I guess while he was in Africa, he got killed during firefight in front of the Khonshu statue in Egypt uh, or a Khonshu statue statue in Egypt. And that's when the God Khonshu uh, recruited him to be his fist. That is how he was re -re resurrected. And uh, you know, that's, that's basically the, the origin story of how this specific, Oh, and I should say that, the guy's name who's like under the mask or whatever for uh, Mr. Uh, Knight is his name is Mark Spector. So that's like the secret identity. Although, like I said, he's got multiple identities he's been before and they list them out later on. So then we just see, you know, basically he has is just helping out this neighborhood. You know, whenever someone comes to him, they'll be like, hey, there's something in my, you know, apartment complex that's killing people. He'll go take them out. He fights Vermin, uh, the guy that the bad guy from uh, Spider-Man. Vermin. He's he was in uh, Craven's Last Hunt. He's like, I ain't Spider-Man. If you come here, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> then we see he's got like a partner named uh, Miss Reese, who uh, works for him. Basically, she ends up kind of being like his ears and eyes. Like while he's out at night on patrol, she'll say like, Oh yeah, someone uh, super villain is attacking you know this area, and he'll go fight him. So. That's what happens. He goes to respond to a supervillain attack and he gets there and it's a little too late. This new doctor in, in the neighborhood actually took down the supervillain. No problem. The doctor doesn't seem to like Moon Knight at all that much. So, and then uh, he's talking to Reese and we see someone's listening in on them having a conversation. Um, and this is all the, the identities we can see that have been Moon Knight. So we have uh, Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, then there's Moon Knight, then there's mr knight then there's jack lockley so all of these five people have been you know they're they're the same person basically but he's been all of them and they're also the personalities that he has to kind of like fight between in his you know with his did disorder so and then we get the big bad is actually listening on their conversation and he's saying like we don't know who he is yet basically he's saying normally his statements are really big and lots of explosions and pizzazz but he's offended by everything that moon knight stands for so he's going to destroy him small and personally uh you know because he hates that he has he like 
that Moon Knight has a sacred duty. And basically he says he's going to break his faith in Khonshu. So that's kind of a cool setup for a bad guy. There's some more in this book that uh, sets up another uh, kind of like side bad guy story plot. So I'm not going to spoil that, but uh, I had a lot of fun reading it. And uh, I, I mean, I've never read Moon Knight before, so this did a really good job of setting up like the history of Moon Knight and uh, letting letting you know people know, you know, this is where he comes from and all that. So um, I would totally recommend this book. I would say the art was great in this and the writing was good. And, you know, I'm not a big Marvel uh, junkie or anything. So this actually makes me really want to read a new Marvel book, which doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I'm going to give this one a four out of five. Uh, like I said, the, the art was great and the story was really good. It was really strong. And uh, I'm going to continue with this run. Uh, hopefully it, you know, goes for a while uh, and, and the story continues to be really good. So um, with that, if you guys, once again, wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. And we will see you on the next one.